Hi, this is Benoit, your host of the Solar Maverick podcast. I would like to thank Schward Consulting for sponsoring this episode. Schward Consulting is a leading solar consulting firm dedicated to design, engineering, and owner's representation in all areas of solar photovoltaics for the commercial, industrial, and utility markets. Thank you again for sponsoring the podcast. I think it's a beautiful future. I think the forecast is good. And to be able to take and integrate roof restoration into the solar project, to be able to have one company pay for everything, I think it streamlines the process. Hello and welcome to the Solar Maverick podcast, where solar meets entrepreneurship and experience. I'm your host, Benoit Thangen, so let's get into it. Welcome to the Solar Maverick Podcast. This is your host, Benoit Thanj, and I'm excited to actually have a repeat of a very popular podcast that we had, which is episode 11 of the Solar Maverick Podcast, and it's called The Marriage of Roofing and Solar with Daryl Pylon and Bob Burwasser. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Benoit. Thank you, Benoit. And it was a very popular podcast. We actually got a lot of great feedback about the integration of roofing and solar, so I thought you know, we would just take it up another level. Like that was the 101. Here's now the 201 where we're going into more detail. And we have the preeminent experts in roofing with Bob, who's actually has now it's 29 years in the commercial roofing market. He's the regional technical manager for Everest Systems. And he worked for various material manufacturers, G, Silicon, Bear, Excella, Carlisle, and if you don't know Everest, Everest boasts over 30 years of experience in the coding industry. This experience and their focus on quality allows them to provide effective solutions for any coding applications. And Daryl is the expert on solar. <laughs> he is the director of business development at Standard Solar, which if you don't know Standard Solar, it's a vertically integrated commercial industrial EPC company and financing. That's right. And they invest in solar projects, both commercial, industrial, and utility scale projects. And they have 800 million of low cost capital to invest in projects. And they were uh, recently acquired by Energir, which has a $6 billion balance sheet. If you're not familiar, it's an energy company based in Montreal, Canada. So I think the great way to start off this podcast is actually to you both, I gave a very brief description, but I think it would be very helpful for our audience to learn more about you. And obviously they should check out the prior episode that you did, episode 11. Thank you, Benoit. This is Bob Burwasser, and I've been in the commercial roofing business, as Benoit stated, for 29 years, all in liquid applied roofing systems, working for various manufacturers. I have been a regional technical manager in the Northeast for the entire duration and look forward to enabling more solar panels to go on more commercial roofs. And this is Daryl Pylon. I'm the Director of Business Development at Standard Solar. Glad to be here and to be here with Bob and Benoit to share some critical details about the marriage of roof and solar. Standard Solar is a vertically integrated solar company that has a tremendous focus on finance. So we bring a low cost of capital, $800 million annually that we have to invest in these projects. And we pay for things like roof restoration and bring it all together in, in one solution, in most cases as a PPA. But sometimes the owner of the building may want to own the solar array, and it's still a great fit, even if they own the solar array and they don't choose a power purchase agreement. So I'm glad to be here. Standard Solar is fully dedicated to roof restoration as a part of a solar array solution for many building owners. As we, we've experienced, a lot of building owners, the number one deferred maintenance item is the roof. And uh, it deters a lot of roof projects because they're just not quite sure how to handle that. So we work together with Bob and his companies to be able to bring that solution for the roof restoration as well as the solution for the monetary aspect of the project. Appreciate you having us here today, Benoit. Yeah, thank you for being on the podcast. I think we'll learn a lot and we appreciate you providing your insight and expertise. Daryl, I had a question for you, you know, to start the podcast off. What do you look for deciding whether or not a particular project is a good candidate for rooftop solar? Well, I think most roofs actually are good candidates. There are very few 
maybe a river rock ballasted EPDM might be a big challenge to be able to actually restore the roof and, and install the solar. But many of the roofs that exist out there are really good candidates. And when you do a roof mounted solar, you have a couple of options with the energy. It could be a behind the meter solution for the actual building owner or industrial site that actually uses the energy on site. Or it could be like in New Jersey, a growing business sector for community solar, where we actually put the solar on the roof, pay for the roof to be restored and use it for community solar. And that's a growing trend too around the United States. Yeah, that's a huge growing trend. And the benefit for the building owner is obviously they receive a roof lease with the potential roof restoration Absolutely, as well, which is huge. That's where Bob comes in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Bob, you know, I know that you both are focused on roof restoration. Can you tell our listeners what is a roof restoration and how does it work? Sure. Every case is somewhat different when you're looking at commercial roofs. Um, Some conditions are worse than other conditions. Some roofs have two roofs on them already. What we look for is, as Daryl said, every roof can be restored We will perform cores on the roof to see what's there physically currently, the shape of whatever's insulation is there, conditions, moisture, so on and so forth. There's a visual evaluation that's done followed by an infrared moisture survey, which really pinpoints where the discrepancies are in the roof that that need to be remediated with restoration. The thing that we provide is liquid applied silicone. It's a high solid silicone that is normally spray applied over these roofs. And what the owner ends up with is a seamless monolithic self-flashing membrane that has tremendous properties like elongation and tensile strength and enables companies like Standard Solar to install more racking, solar racking systems on these, what we now call solar roof platforms. And what we try to avoid is roof replacement, which gets extremely costly, which we'll go into later in more detail. And what occurs at that point is that the deals, the solar deals become vastly more expensive and sometimes don't get done. So we are enablers for the solar industry in that we have the right product, material installations, and can offer 25-year warranties, which match PPAs and equipment warranties as well. How long has the roof restoration product been in the market? Actually, it was initiated as a material in the New York World's Fair in 1964. GE Silicones, the inventor of silicone, showcased the product in Flushing, New York. It's been used ever since and seems to be exploding recently in the roofing marketplace. That's amazing to hear. What do you look for in deciding, Daryl, whether or not a particular project is a good candidate for rooftop solar? Well, as we talked about before, you know, there's a lot of different types of businesses that exist. And we have nonprofits, you know, government agencies. These are all companies that maybe don't pay taxes or don't have the ability to take advantage of depreciation. And so a power purchase agreement can be generated and created to help them go with renewable resources and solutions. And again, in many cases, in different states, it varies. But There, in some states that have good incentives, we can actually provide a new roof through Bob and and his company, Silicone, which will outlast the solar, which is awesome. It's a great solution. And pay for that in the PPA and in some cases be below the current cost of energy. So we're solving a number of problems. We're solving the monetary issue that we can help building owners get things done. I believe I've heard in the past that the number one building Deferred maintenance item is the roof. And so we can solve that problem with a new roof, a restored roof that has the same longevity as the solar. We pay for that and we can do it very cost effectively and quickly by incorporating these things simultaneously. So I think there's many, many companies out there and many, many roofs that are great possibilities for roof restoration and solar. So I think it's a pretty broad range. Definitely. And you're also talking about even if you do a roof restoration, it could be for a ground-mounted system. I know you were mentioning that in the pre-interview, that there's an opportunity as well, that that the solar doesn't necessarily have to be, or it could be even 
on the ground as well with the rooftop. Absolutely. It's not the location of the solar that makes it special in the power purchase agreement, you know, solution. It can be on the ground. There may be a pretty extensive roof, say at a hospital or maybe a manufacturing facility where there's a lot of roof vents or fans and rooftop equipment and it doesn't lend itself, but they may have a field that they like to use behind the location. So we install the solar there and we pay for the roof restoration there. And again, it's the two coming together in one solution in the power purchase agreement that I think is a beautiful option for many clients. And how do you qualify whether a current roof needs a restoration prior to the solar install? Well, there's a couple things you look at. First and foremost is the current condition of that roof, um, coupled with the age and when the warranty actually expires. A lot of cases, we look at roofs, I'd say a, a soft benchmark is anywhere between five and seven years old as a minimum. Anything older than that, we'd want to restore that roof and get them to a brand new 25-year warranty. So we look at certain things that if it's a membrane, if it's a modified tuminous roof, a smooth built up, anything that's smooth and dry, we can either prime it and spray it or just spray it. Those jobs lend itself to fitting in beautifully with PPAs and owners that, that want to own the system because the roof then becomes a 25-year asset warranted by a major corporation and it makes these deals pencil out. You mentioned it a little bit before, but how much does like a roof restoration cost approximately or like well, high level? The range of a roof restoration depends on where it is, how large it is, condition, whether there's two roofs on, existing. A lot of things going into account here. I would say a range is maybe a third of what a roof replacement would be in any of these areas. So it does economically make a tremendous amount of sense. Yeah, that's a huge cost differential between a restoration and roof replacement. If the listeners don't know, what is a roof replacement? If you could go, I know you talked a little bit about it, but if you could talk into more detail. A roof replacement is if the existing roof is just too far gone that we can't encapsulate the current conditions. We would have to remove it. What that means to the owner and the solar deal is costs go way up, disruptions go way up, the speed of the installation goes way down. We're removing sometimes materials that contain asbestos. It's something that you don't want to see when you're evaluating these roofs. So it's a costly, time-consuming, disruptive procedure that has killed a lot of solar deals and that's something that of course we want to avoid we want we want to enable more solar deals so the restoration versus replacement is just makes a lot of sense hi this is benoit your host of the solar maverick podcast i would like to thank schwerd consulting for being the sponsor for this episode schwerd consulting is a leading solar consulting firm dedicated to design, engineering, and owner's representation in all areas of solar voltaics for the commercial, industrial, and utility markets. At Schward Consulting, they like to say, we know solar, we don't just do solar. What sets them apart is their 100% focus on solar and understanding the business of their clients. In its five years of business, Schward Consulting has provided services for approximately 450 megawatts of PV across over 330 sites and 15 states plus the Caribbean. That total includes 300 megawatts of completed designs and engineering and 150 megawatts of consulting and owner rep services. Let Schwerd Consulting take the burden off you and bring ease and expertise in all areas of engineering and design or help you navigate the technical world of solar. If you're interested in learning more about Schwerd Consulting, you can call at 215-219-6718 or email at admin at schwerdconsulting.com. Schwerd Consulting website is www.schwerdconsulting.com. We'll also have this information as well in the notes of the podcast. Steve Schwerd, who's the owner of Schwerd Consulting, was interviewed on episode 17 and 48 of the Solar Maverick podcast and also episode 42, which was a panel discussion on how solar technology is changing the world. Thank you to Schwerd Consulting for sponsoring this episode of the podcast.
And going back to the restoration, can you talk about the steps involved in restoring most roofs? Well, let's take an example of a membrane. What we're going to do is an infrared survey on that particular building, which will pinpoint where residual moisture is underneath the membrane. That will be removed and replaced. We will then power wash and or prime the membrane, treat the seams first, and then the field of the roof, all spray applied, so that the end result is a seamless, self-flashed, highly elongated membrane that will enable solar to be put on it. And what, what types of roofs are ideal for roof restoration? Metal roofs are ideal, corrugated or standing seam, metal, any type of membrane, whether it's PVC, TPO, EPDM, which is the very popular black rubber roofs that we see out there, those are ideal candidates for restoration. Even modified bitumen and build-up roofs as well, some with pea gravel that you can solve through perhaps employing a spray polyurethane foam and then the silicone. That's a, that's a good point. Thank you, Daryl. The, the spray polyurethane foam is a material that we would use for certain circumstances. One, if it is an irregular surface, we're going to need that as a buffer because obviously coating is not going to be used effectively on rougher surfaces. So we'll spray apply typically an inch and a half of closed cell high density polyurethane foam which acts as a tremendous insulator for the building. This is the best, the highest R value of any roof insulation in the marketplace. The fact that it's applied, spray applied, also serves the insulation in that it's seamless, so there's no air infiltration, and it's a monolithic blanket of insulation over the existing roof, which eliminates thermal shorts like fasteners every two feet, it, which are basically like driving a nail through your refrigerator door. You'll lose 20, 25% of your energy through all those fasteners. With the foam, like I said, monolithic blanket, you don't have any of that causing you huge energy losses. And if I could add to that, using spray polyurethane foam in areas like states that border, high wind states, where instead of perhaps using a ballasted system on the roof, it makes sense to anchor to the actual roof structure. So those pockets can be easily sealed with spray polyurethane foam because it is also an air barrier and a moisture barrier and it's waterproof. And so you get all those benefits and then apply the self-flashing silicone to the top. It's a great solution in areas that have high wind where you need to penetrate the roof to get to uh, securing the solar in those regions. Daryl, you're hired. Okay, I'll start Monday. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I like what you got. It's uh, it's a great solution, it really is. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I mean, this is all great information. Does like a roof restoration or even when you have a roof, does it withstand the weight of the solar array? I would say basically the roof is weightless, the restoration. So it's more of a structural issue. I guess, Daryl, you could comment better on that. Sure. When we do look at roof restoration, I think the membrane itself might be a third of a pound. It's really next to nothing. The spray polyurethane foam might be, again, a third of a pound. So between the two, it really, again, isn't much to account for, but we do account for that. So when we look at roofs, we actually look at the structural capability of the building. So there's a third-party engineering that, you know, consultant engineer that's hired and they'll evaluate the structural capability of the building. Even the metal roofs that Bob mentioned, mostly, most times, those, even though they're relatively inexpensive buildings to build, they normally can handle the weight of the solar. On a metal roof, you know, it may be around three pounds a square foot, and on a baluster roof, maybe four to five pounds a square foot. And so we find that most roofs, including the snow loads that exist, can handle that. But it's always verified by third-party engineering and, and stamped, so it's all done very safely. That, that's very helpful. And can you talk about, and I know you both mentioned this a little bit, but really like the array and matching with the roof you know, warranty, and then also about making sure that the solar does not void the roof warranty? Well, we offer various warranties on the roof. They're fully labor and material warranties against leaks. It's non-prorated 
the warranty and it's offered from manufacturers such as GE Momentive, Carlisle, as well as, as Everest Systems. Whether or not solar is there, we have a solar program for each one of these manufacturers offering 25 years. If that's what the PPA calls for, the owner wants 25 years, we will offer that without question. And it's one of the things I, I embrace in our relationship with Bob and the roofing companies he brings is that, you know, we have a solar array that has a 25-year warranty in terms of production. And I think in many cases in the past, solar is put on roofs that maybe it shouldn't have. And I think with a restoration solution at the cost-effective numbers that he and his contractors can provide, it's very palatable. It's palatable in the power purchase agreement. It's palatable if the, the building owner wants to own the solar and restore the roof himself. In a nutshell, from my perspective, the 25-year warranty is more than the 20- and 15-year warranties you get from any single-ply manufacturer. So you're getting a superior warranty. You're getting a superior product at a much lesser cost. And when we incorporate that into power purchase agreements, it helps everybody. It helps the building owner. It helps the cost of the PPA come down. It helps everybody. And so restoring the roof, incorporating that into a power purchase agreement, I think is is a beautiful solution. And the fact that the 25-year PPAs that we write, sometimes with two five-year extensions, we need the roof to last 35 years in reality. And silicone and what Bob has the uh, capability of meeting that demand. So I think it's a great solution. And when it comes to writing PPAs, I think, you know, sometimes we get asked the question, what size is really a good size to start? And I think, you know, a half a megawatt on a metal roof, whether it's corrugated or standing seam, would be around 50,000 square feet. And if it was a flat membrane roof, whether it's mod bid or EPDM, TPO, PVC, all of those would be closer to 70,000 because typically there's more rooftop units on those type of buildings. So, and it's ballasted and spread out a little bit more than it would be on a metal roof. Anything from 50 or 70,000 square feet and beyond is great for power purchase agreements and roof restoration. Definitely. And that makes sense because I guess below 500 kilowatts, then the cost related to legal for the PPA makes it more challenging to it make does. the economic work. It does. So. But some states that have great incentives, we do look at that individually. So any project that could be smaller may still be a good project. It really and the cost of the roof as well, and the restoration, whether or not you need foam. There's a little bit of difference in price between silicone only and silicone and foam. Maybe you could speak into that, Bob. Correct. Yeah, the foam normally adds somewhere around $2 a square foot to the restoration cost. And as I said, sometimes it's really needed and, and can offer a significant payback to the owner in, in energy savings. So again, it's case by case. The foam works well in a lot of situations, but in most situations, the coating does the job. One thing about the high solid silicones that we offer, it is an inorganic material and is basically impervious to UV degradation. So it goes and goes and goes. And as Daryl said, it's great to have that 25-year warranty, but they actually look for 10 more years with the silicone and because of its composition and, and characteristics, we feel pretty confident that, that we can meet that demand. That's really interesting. Daryl, can you talk about maybe which states are more favorable because of state level incentives sure. to you know put solar with the roofing? I appreciate that question. Standard Solar, we actually own and operate solar arrays and solar projects in 18 different states currently. So I'd say there's 18 states that are great. We did look at several for Carlisle and Everett. So we looked at California, Maryland, Delaware, Washington, D.C., New Jersey, New York. And so we tried to come up with ranges, you know, what the PPA rate might be depending on the state. I think New Jersey, as always, you know, Washington, D.C., is there's a lot of value to that. California, even Florida, we looked at. So I think you really were welcome to receive inquiries from whatever state it may be that people have a, a need in. But regardless of the state and the incentives, it's interesting because I care a lot about the roof and Bob cares a lot about the solar. And whether there's solar involved or not, when it comes to roofs and maintaining those roofs, I really don't know of anything that I've experienced better than silicone. And when we think about it on the roofs under our ballasted systems, it's the only system that I know that's actually guaranteed in ponding water. And that's really important too. So, because many roofs actually currently have ponding water. Especially if they're flat. Yeah. 
And so, and when we put our ballasted system, there's a lot of slip sheets that are required sometimes by the manufacturer. And in most cases with the silicone, a slip sheet isn't required. And that helps things too from a labor and material perspective. I think it's a great marriage. Definitely. That's really helpful to understand. Are CERN projects more favorable to PPAs versus outright ownership? You kind of talked about that a little bit before. I think if a company is a for-profit company and they have the capital and they have the tax appetite, they should really consider owning the system. Regardless, it still needs to be engineered properly and installed properly and workmanship is important, but there's an option there. If they'd rather put their money into robotics or equipment or conveying systems, whatever their business may be, they may want to entertain a power purchase agreement where we, they only pay for the power that's produced by the system. So on a PPA, there's no upfront cost. There's no maintenance cost. There's really no cost. We bear the brunt of that. So we actually pay for the component. We pay for everything and including the O&M. So if it's a 25-year PPA, the upfront costs, the installation, the ongoing maintenance, everything is included in what they would pay in a cost per kilowatt hour basis. Including the roof. Including, the roof. and especially, the roof. The roof is the, one of the first things that's done, right? When the PPA is executed, it's in their name, right? The building owner's name. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Because actually, you know, when it comes to that, Standard Solar will know we're paying for the roof. So That's something that can be initiated immediately. So Bob and his team can get in and restore the roof. Now the roof is ready for the solar. In the meantime, there's a process that we go through on the solar side of the fence. It takes longer, but we will pay for it. And the nice thing for the building owner is this. We pay for the roof restoration cost, and it may be six months until solar is installed and operational. You know, that roof, the building cost, the, the value of that building has increased by the restoration value. And then Standard Solar essentially waits the term to really get paid back for that investment. But the reason we do it is because we believe in the combined solution. You know, we think that the best and right thing to do is to have the roof match the longevity of the solar, the goal being never to have to pull it off until the end of its life. That, that makes sense. And that's really interesting. Why are rooftops seemingly growing in popularity? Well, I think one of the reasons is that the coatings revolution that's taken place over the last five years, the restoration process has become more and more popular and and solar integrators are now seeing that there is a solution to the rooftop dilemma, which, which was, oh, we have to replace the roof and the costs are prohibitive to installing solar. So now that there is an economical long-term solution that's in the marketplace, the word is spreading. And as a result, rooftop solar is growing. I agree with Bob. I think this silicon system that's supplied is the quintessential roof restoration system under our solar. He likes to call it the solar platform, not the roof. (laughs) And I like that because it is a solar platform. And I think there is a growing understanding. I think there's a growing understanding. I think it's becoming more, there's an awareness And I think that there's now more traction than ever before to be able to take the roof, restore it, and integrate it into the solar solution. And I think it's the right way of doing it. I think it will have good years in the future where this will be just the standard, the norm, as people, you know, better understand as it's embraced and it's communicated easily. It's a great solution. We're here to answer questions. Yeah, definitely. This has been an amazing interview. Is there any points that we should know about roofing and solar that we haven't talked about? Well, I just, just to summarize, we as silicone roof manufacturers are totally committed to solar technology and want to see its explosive growth throughout the country. We're a national company and we'll support those projects wherever they are and evaluate them for the solar integrators and installers and make sure that we can install or help install as many solar racks and panels as possible. And I agree with Bob. I think it's a beautiful future. I think the forecast is good. And to be able to take and integrate roof restoration into the solar project, to be able to have one company pay for everything, I think it streamlines the process. And I think We have $800 million of our own capital that we invest in these projects annually. And to be able to take that capital and deploy it on the roof, deploy it on the solar, 
and come up with a very competitive power purchase agreement rate that's attractive to the end user, I think is powerful. I think that as a, to answer the question a little bit differently, we do a lot of ground mounts and we do a lot of carports and parking garages as a company, but I think there's a growing challenge on the ground where there's certain areas of the United States that really don't want to see farmland used or wooded areas used and so on and so forth. I think there's a natural migration back to the roof. I think the reason why it hasn't been popular is because people are unsure as to what to do when it comes to the roof. Do I replace it? Do I restore it? You know, what are the steps? How do I get it done? Those type of things. And I think we're at the point now where being able to integrate these two is going to really save everybody a lot of time and aggravation. We'll pay for it. We'll coordinate it. And we'll make sure that it's done. An important thing to pass on too is that the building owner owns the roof. So basically Standard Solar will pay for the roof to be restored. The building owner takes ownership of that in the warranty. We own the solar that's sitting on the roof and we take that responsibility. So it's a great benefit to the building owner to have a brand new restored roof and a warranty associated with it. And it's great that the two match in terms of 25 year duration or longer. Well said, Daryl. Yeah, definitely. That was great. If people after the podcast wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? And we'll also have this in the notes of the podcast as well. I can be emailed at bburwasser at everestsco.com or my office number is 212-689-4440, cell number 917-287-4370. And we're here to help evaluate what's there, deliver scopes of work and budget numbers, and we can take it from there. Thank you. And this is Daryl again. The best way to reach me would be by cell at 347-633-2502 or at my email, daryl.pylon at standardsolar.com. That's D-A-R-Y-L dot P as in Paul, I-L-O-N at standardsolar.com. We welcome your inquiries and we look forward to supporting your goals and objectives to integrating roof and solar together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for another amazing podcast. I think our listeners who we call Mavericks are really going to enjoy this. It really is the marriage of roofing and solar, the next level, the 201. So thank you again for being on the podcast. Thank you, Thank Benoit. You, Benoit. Oh, anytime. Thanks for listening to the Solar Maverick Podcast. The Solar Maverick Podcast is brought to you by Renew Energy. We're a solar development and consulting firm. If you believe that this podcast is adding value to you, please give us a five-star review and share with those that you think could benefit from this information. Please email all questions, suggestions, and feedback to info at renewenergy.com. That's I-N-F-O at reneuenergy.com. The Solar Maverick Podcast is produced by Podcast Laundry and executive produced by Benoit Thangen and Kevin Y. Brown. <laughs>